I made it. It was super difficult. I'm here now in Dominican Republic. I sailed from uh, Georgetown, Bahamas, but that was almost a miracle. It was like two weeks sailing against the wind with big waves, big uh, winds. Everything was big except my boat. So I don't know. My, I think my life was in danger at least two times. I started in a boat like those, like six years ago. Then I moved to a McGregor 26, then to a Gemini 3000. I used to sail solo. I don't have problems at night. I only can sleep 20 minutes. I love fixing things. The problem is when I need another hand or somebody to hold me something. I work from home, from my boat. So I can't stay in a rolly anchorage. I started sailing in lakes just the weekends that the wind was really calm. Then I moved to sailing in the ocean, choosing very well the weather. But sailing from Georgetown to Dominican Republic is several days sailing against the prevailing winds and the protection is minimal. The first part that I did was from Georgetown to Romkey and I timed really good a cold front. However, the cold front changed everything, the winds, but produced so weird things that the, in the middle of the way, I was seasick and finally I threw up and I was by myself. So I made it to Rome Key. The water is super beautiful, incredible. It's the best in Bahamas, I, I can't believe it. And the sandbar is really nice. Uh, but after I stayed one day there, the next days will be terrible in that anchorage because the current is so strong because it's in the middle of the ocean. Uh, so I decided to continue. The motor all the way to the east and then sail south when the wind show up. The idea was to go to the last island in Bahamas. Uh, but uh, after I motored, everything went good. But when I was sailing south, the wind showed up really strong. And uh, suddenly the jeep uh, fell off. I was thinking, what happened here? Well, something broke in the mast. So I couldn't use that halyard. I had to use a rope that I have for, a, for something of maintenance. The shape wasn't good, but I could sail. But when I was aiming to the last island of Bahamas, I read a review and it said that finding gas in that island was difficult. So I changed my plan and I am to Torcan Caicos. I had to arrive really early in the morning to Torcan Caicos because the wind produced by that area is really strong and against the entrance. I had to sail closer to the wind when I heard and it was that the parts that attach the rudder broke. So now I didn't have one rudder and I have to remove everything from the rudder in the middle of the ocean with waves and everything and then tie the engines and continue with one rudder, with one not very good jeep until I arrived to Sapodilla Beach. I look for gas and then I rode my bike to the small towns and finally I found a place, the guy was super, super nice, immediately stopped what he was doing and fixed one of the two parts that were broken. I came back to the boat and prepared everything for the next day to replace the part below the water. It was difficult because I had to, to keep the water to get it in, in the boat and have one tool in one side and one tool inside the boat. So it was super difficult but i could replace that part then i came back to to my new friend he fixed the other part i replaced that part and immediately i started motoring to the other side of torcan caicos because the wind will blow strong in few days i i motor and in the middle the engine died so i had to came back sailing I tried to understand what happened, but because I was by myself, I couldn't split the problem. I need somebody to push the starter and I, I didn't have somebody to help me. So I couldn't, I couldn't understand what happened, but suddenly the engine started again after a lot of tries. 
So, and it, my engine was super reliable for years. I, I started again, and when I was very close to the island, the engine started getting hot. The impeller was broken. I had to stop there, anchor the next day, sail only with sails. A very risky area because it's full of rock. If I hit a rock, I will be in a terrible problem because nobody is around. The 16 channel never replied. So I was, I, I like myself. I, I, I can be in a super big problem in the middle of the ocean. I changed the impeller and the next day I tried to go to the cot to jump to the last island in Torcan Caicos but that cot is terrible. I mean the water that is coming from the ocean produce some currents I mean incredible plus a little I mean plus the wind that was like 18 knots and the, the boat was bouncing bah, bah. and after 20 minutes I said no this is impossible I'm going to break everything here in the boat. I came back the water was coming in really fast to the boat. It was one of the kills. Axel, a screw like five inches long, I think, it was broken. I had to wait for days because I couldn't go to the town with that wind. After a few days, I was stopped there. I was so tired and a friend of mine was saying to me every day, oh, you have to stay 10 more days dead, but that could be worse. I mean, it was, yeah. So I went to the town looking for the screw, a town of five blocks by five blocks or something like that. The biggest store was like a Walmart. They have everything, but in a house. I asked for, for a screw. Look in that box. I opened the box and nothing. The screws were really small, but I was lucky that in the floor, it was the screw. I kept looking for one a little bigger, just in case that was short. I met another guy, that the guy was, was super nice. He helped me, he went to his job just to look for that uh, screw. Uh, finally he said, no, I couldn't find it. So I kept looking and then he found me like two hours later. Hey, hey, I found your screw. I went to the boat. Now the problem is to remove the old screw and put the new one without losing the kill. Everything again, very tricky until I did it. I was running those days because I knew that in those next 10 days, maybe, maybe I had a chance next day to cross to the next island and maybe to wait there, at least to change the environment. I said to my friend, hey, I'm, I'm going, I'm leaving tomorrow to the next island. And he said, no, no, no. The waves are really tall and really, really close. I'm planning to go to the next island, no, no, not too far. So I, I was thinking about leaving at, I think, 1 p.m. or something like that. That was the, the slack tide. But I decided to leave at 4 a.m. in the morning. That gave me the chance to decide if I continue to Dominican Republic in only one jump, not two. It was a, a plan B. So. I went to the cot at 4 a.m. in the morning with the sails up uh, because the wind had changed a little. I went there and when I was checking how rough was that, the engine died. And I didn't have another option that continue to, to the last island in Torcan Caicos. I sailed all the way, but the wind helped me, so it was fast. I was a little worried about the boat because I couldn't fix the, the mast in the top, so I didn't know how strong uh, the, the boat was at that time, but I kept sailing to the last island. And my idea was to look for somebody to help me find the problem of, of the engine. But I only found a sailboat and I had to tack several times to arrive there. The wind was really strong, so I said, no, let's continue. So I continued in a route that usually the people don't sail with big waves, short period. And I didn't know at that time if I was going to make it to Dominican Republic or to Haiti or to Cuba or maybe to US if I'm lucky. It was super stressful. But at that time I I try to focus only in the positives, only in, in, in my goal and to manage what I could. I couldn't manage, for example, at one time the waves were really high 
and it started breaking so it could the water could enter in the boat but I couldn't manage that so I the only thing that I could manage was to prepare the boat to remove water from the inside if that happened and keep going and that never happened I, I mean I, I had some water over the boat but not too much uh, but I continue and when I was arriving here I knew that the wind will change and I was worried about how, how I'm going to enter to to Luperon uh, but I arrived here earlier than I needed I needed to arrive here at 7 or 8 in the morning not later uh, but I arrived like at 5 a.m. and when I arrived I saw red lights I didn't know what was that it was scary and I was thinking about entering with my light, my headlight, when I thought, no, maybe that's a very bad idea. I have to spend the time. So I started sailing from one side to the other. When, when I lost a little the direction, the current was too strong. And I realized that just sailing, I wouldn't make it. So... So I had to put the extra engine that I have, the dinghy engine, but that engine couldn't make it. And uh, I said, well, I don't have any other option. Put again the, the engine that died, the main engine, the main engine. And I started several times, didn't work as expected. But then I remember that the last time that had the same problem, it started, uh, that it was full of, gas inside so I pumped the gas but without shock and started so oh my god so I knew that I, I, I was going to make it so I removed the sails and and I motor into the to Luperon and that was incredible I was thinking this is really a miracle and at that moment uh, the boat hit a wave and a light inside the boat blinked. I think the, the boat agreed. Days later, I met some other people that was coming from Georgetown and they told me almost the same story, that they broke the boat, they, they had to replace maybe boat engines. Really is super difficult coming from Georgetown, I mean, Maybe with a lot of experience and a, a very blue water boat could be easier, but it's, it's, something, it's something for professionals. <laughs> <laughs>